Well, hello and welcome to our uh, Bible study here at the Good Shepherd in Appleton, Wisconsin. Glad you're joining me again uh, today as we get ready in our church year to complete uh, the church year season, uh, meaning that as we look at our Bible studies uh, for this time of the year, they're going to be focusing on the end times um, and especially uh, looking forward to Christ's return uh, to judge the living and the dead and know that as believers we will be with him in heaven forever. And so as we look forward to that day, we're going to talk about God in all things, uh, Colossians 1, 13 to 20. Before we get to that uh, text, let us begin with a word of prayer. And this is a prayer for the church. Lord God, we come before you with penitent hearts, seeking forgiveness through Jesus for sins that have been brought injury to your church by our loveless words and our silence when we should have spoken. Grant us willingness to work together to preserve peace and harmony in the church, which you have purchased with the blood of your Son. May we always seek the truth of Christ's gospel as your redeemed children, bound together by the bonds of love and by our vocations. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so Colossians chapter 1, 13 to 20 also served, uh, if you're familiar with the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, served for our national youth gathering. Uh, where our youth from ages 14 to 19 uh, were gathered together in Houston uh, in July. So it's an opportunity to look at the text that they uh, were studying uh, through their time. So, deliverance, Colossians 1, 13 to 17 is where we begin. And so we read, uh, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now you see the emphasis on all things. Uh, in this uh, reading. So the wonder of redemption is appreciated only when you realize who the Redeemer is and what he did in love to rescue us from the domain of darkness. Paul says he is the image of the invisible God. He is God made visible and tangible. So Paul goes on, he is the firstborn of all creation. All things were created through him and for him. So what does this say about the Son, the image of the invisible God, in relation to all creation? So as we think about our Savior, we think about the one who um, is the one who redeems us. We're talking about Jesus. And as we look at John chapter 1, 1 to 3, and remember that Jesus is with the Father and the Holy Spirit from the beginning because John chapter 1 1 says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and so Jesus is with the Father and with the Holy Spirit in the beginning he is God and uh, we know this uh, because God is uh, with no beginning and no end, meaning that he is uh, eternal. And that Jesus also is flesh um, in that he comes into this world, um, that the word was made flesh, as John 1 continues, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. So Jesus is God, and Jesus is man, the man, God, who comes to save us to transfer us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And only Jesus is able to do this. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, now this is our creed uh, that we have, uh, the only begotten Son of God, the Nicene Creed in relationship to Jesus, begotten of his Father before all worlds. And so this also echoes John chapter 1. And what we just looked at in Colossians, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. So 
Jesus was always with the Father and the Holy Spirit, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. Now as we remember our, our creeds, the apostles Nicene and Athanasian, they are a confession about who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier. And the reason for these creeds is to bear witness to what God's Word says concerning God. And the reason we have these creeds is to bear witness not only that we believe, but that others believe, knowing that there are those who have false notions in relationship to God and who He is. And one of those uh, is the Arian heresy in the early church. And the Arian heresy suggested that the Son, or Word, from John chapter 1, 1, was God's first creature. A demigod through whom God created all things and who later acted as the Christ to rescue sinners. All of this was to keep the Spirit, God, from having any personal direct contact with the world of matter, which Greek philosophy saw as inherently inferior, even evil. Orthodox theologians saw that Arianism made both creation and salvation depend on one, not fully God. So God, Jesus then, for them, is someone who is created, okay? Not one, as we have in our creed, conceived by the Holy Spirit, begotten of the Father from all eternity. Um, and, and then we have here Orthodox theologians saw Arianism made both creation and salvation depend on one not fully God dec decreasing the wonder of the good news of Jesus and its reliability so in the Nicene Creed how did the church echo apostolic teaching such as in this pericope in speaking of the person and the work of Jesus Christ well here we go begotten of God being of one substance with the Father incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and then born of the Virgin Mary, made man. And then it goes on to how Jesus has saved us, crucified, suffered, buried, but then on the third day rose again. And because he has conquered our enemies, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father as the King and Judge of the living and the dead. And as we consider Jesus then as our Christus Victor, Christ victorious in our lives, he also, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. So what is the relation of the Son of God to the church, and in turn, that of the church to the Son of God? So, and he is the head of the body, the church. We often talk about, uh, Scripture does, as Jesus being the bridegroom and the church being the bride. Uh, the church does not exist. We aren't believers. We aren't people connected to Christ by faith without Jesus crucified and risen. The church is brought together through the means of grace by which that message is communicated. So through God's word, the message of law and gospel are given. And so we celebrate that every day. We also have the good news received in our baptism and also strengthened in the Lord's Supper. So the mark of Jesus and his work for us to save us is always evident in the church, of which he is the head. And that is why the cross is preeminent in the church, so that we identify Christ as our Savior and not ourselves. So he is the head of the church. He is the one whom we turn to, who receive his gifts of forgiveness uh, life and salvation, and whom we live in the confident hope of our salvation. And so Colossians continues, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. So again, really making sure that, unlike Arianism, that Jesus is known and believed in and confessed as God. 
In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Um, and God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. If the Son was eternally the image of the invisible God, what does Paul mean by saying in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in him? So the fullness of God is in Jesus, and we recognize this through his life and ministry. You know, that God loves the world the way that Jesus demonstrated his power as divine through his acts of miracles, his signs and wonders, his resistance, you know, facing the devil and the way he preached and taught the very word as no one else could do it. There was evidence that in Christ that he is God, the fullness of God right there um, in him. Nothing lacking as we find in his, his ministry and the way that he carried out his ministry, uh, helping us to know a God who truly loves us um, and who truly has our best interests uh, in mind. So what assurance is there for us in the fact that through this Son of God, our brother Jesus, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, making peace by the blood of the cross? Um, so this is the assurance uh, that we have. The assurance is that Jesus has reconciled um, to himself all things. And Jesus' death on the cross was where he carried our sins, where he suffered and died, paying the price that we could not pay, uh, that would have been no use uh, to say Jesus did it. And so he has reconciled. He has removed our sin and God's anger for sin upon us through his work on the cross to his carrying the sin suffering and dying in our place so that we have peace uh, by his blood and so this peace assures us uh, by Christ's forgiveness that we truly are children of God as we heard in all saints and that we have the assurance that even though we die we will live in heaven forever so this is the blessing of, of Jesus um, who is God and who is man and who we uh, rely on um, as our Savior and King. And so as we, we believe in Jesus, we know this, this truth, that Jesus is God's Son, uh, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, yet born of the Virgin Mary, and he is our Lord. He has saved and redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, with his holy precious blood and innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under his, him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns through all eternity. This is most certainly true. And this, what I just said, is a second article explanation of the creed. I encourage you to look that up online or find it in your catechism. It's a wonderful reminder of the identity of Jesus, that identity that is ours, uh, the God-man who saves the world. And so thanks again for joining me uh, today as we uh, think about Jesus and who he is and why it's so wonderful that God sent his son into this world and that you and I are saved. So until our next Bible study, thanks for joining me today. I look forward to our Bible study again next week.